With Benjamin Netanyahu calling an Israeli election for the 9th of April, we thought we'd share with you a bit of a primer on who the main players are, what the issues Israelis are discussing, and what the polls are saying three months out. Even though Israel doesn't have to go to elections until November, there's a big reason why the Prime Minister wants to have them earlier. It's his fear that the Attorney General will follow the police's advice and hand down indictments against him in the three separate corruption cases that are pending against him, the most recent of which involves him giving commercial favours to one of Israel's largest media companies in exchange for flattering coverage. With the Attorney General looking to make his decision next month, Netanyahu preferred to pull the trigger on early elections, hoping the Attorney General won't want to hand down charges in the middle of an election campaign. Israeli media also reported that even if charges are brought against him, the Prime Minister would still resist resigning. While cabinet members must resign if charged with corruption, there is no such rule requiring the Prime Minister to do so. This week, in a press conference his office hyped as a dramatic announcement, the Prime Minister urged investigators to allow him to publicly face his accusers. Perhaps he feels the ground shifting beneath him, with a poll finding that 64% of Israelis wanted the Attorney General to announce his decision before the election. But while we wait to see what happens with that, we'll turn our attention to some of the other main players in this election and see who will be challenging Netanyahu in April. Most analysis points to Benny Gantz as the only candidate who is any serious competition to Netanyahu, despite a lack of clarity around his platform. The former IDF chief of staff was courted by most major parties. Labor leader Avi Gabay even had to deny a report that he offered to stand aside and allow Gantz to lead the ticket. In the end, Gantz registered a new party, Hossein Israel, or the Israel Resilience Party, and has begun searching for running mates. While Gantz may be the only candidate who can challenge the Prime Minister's Mr. Security image, it's far from certain that he'll be a representative of the centre-left, for example. Of course, that hasn't stopped Likud members attacking him as a leftist. Over the coming months, as he begins to make policy statements, we may be able to start figuring out exactly who Benny Gantz is and what he stands for. On the right, the big shake-up is a new breakaway party launched by senior members of the Jewish Home Party, Education Minister Naftali Bennett and Justice Minister Ayelet Shaked. Their party is called the New Right, and they're looking to unite both secular and religious right-wing Israelis and draw in members from a number of existing parties. They've also recruited the controversial Jerusalem Post and Breitbart columnist Caroline Glick. Her recent book focuses on an issue that forms the central plank of the New Right's ideology, an embrace of the one-state solution, promotion of settlement growth, and rejection of any Palestinian state. Meanwhile, Labor Chairman Avi Gabay dissolved the Zionist Union partnership between Labor and Tsipi Livni's Hatsunawa party in a dramatic press conference last week. Gabay took the reins of Labor 18 months ago after Bougie Herzog's resignation, having previously served as Minister for Environmental Protection from the Kulanu party in the current coalition. His announcement took everyone by surprise, not only his Labor Party colleagues, but also Tsipi Livni herself, who was sitting next to him and had no advance warning that the Zionist Union was no more. Gabay is new to the party, having joined to seek election as the party leader and doesn't even sit in the Knesset, and his tenure is now under threat, with more than half of centre-left voters thinking Gabay should be removed as leader, and a number of their Knesset members also looking to jump ship. And now to share an average of some of the latest polls with you. With more than three months to go, they're not really a reliable predictor of what the election results might be, but they are interesting as a snapshot of how the Israeli public is feeling now, particularly with a number of new parties forming and old ones falling apart. As you can see, Netanyahu's Likud is still firmly in the lead with 29 seats, almost half of what he'd need to form a coalition. Benny Gantz's Israel Resilience Party would come in second with 13 seats, while Yair Lapid's Yesh Atid Party and the Joint Arab List would have 13 and 12 seats each. Naftali Bennett and Ayelet Shaked's New Right Party would have nine, entirely at the expense of their old Jewish Home Party. The Avi Gabay-led Labour would have eight seats, less than half its current 18. Kulanu, the party of Finance Minister Moshe Kachlon, loses half its current base of 10. Meretz and Avigdor Lieberman's Yisrael Beitainu would say roughly the same, while United Torah Judaism and Shas, the two ultra-Orthodox parties, would still have a combined 12 seats. A new party, created by former Yisrael Beitainu MK Orly Levy, would get five seats, as she seeks to renew the Geshe brand, founded by her father David in the mid-1990s. Of course, party compositions are still going to change, and regardless of who wins the next election, they'll need to wrangle coalition partners, as there's no clear mandate for any party with the current forecasted results. That's all we have for now. Hopefully a good start if you're trying to wrap your head around what the election is going to mean for Israel. Watch out for future episodes where we'll share more as news develops. Thanks for watching.